So we started the program here at Shangxian uh, two and a half years ago, and we wanted to, our company wanted to establish a, a way for the students who want to study in America to kind of get a head start a little bit. So kind of helping them with language, helping them with culture, helping them with teaching style. Because once Chinese students arrive in the United States, it's a very different environment for them. So they have to. So if they can kind of experience life, academic life a little bit, then it gives them a leg up once they get to the United States and they're not so overwhelmed. Um, so that's the goal of the program is to try to help these students. So they're here for two years and then they go on to university in the United States. And I teach U.S. history and I teach world history, so um, for me, like, those are opportunities to share a little bit of Western culture with the kids in a different way than what they normally see. Like, usually they just see TV mm -hmm. and they, you know, maybe they've seen, you know, Gone with the Wind or, or something, but not. So their, their ideas about what the United States is like is very different from, mm. from you know, my, my understanding of the United States. And so I think one of the things that really has challenged me is I want to have them gather and grasp as many parts of the United States as they can um, while they're here in China. And so... Um, and sometimes, you know, it's not as pleasant to look at the things in the United States, like the Trail of Tears or talking about, you know, the Underground Railroad and talking about the, the issue of slavery and, you know, Abraham Lincoln and so, and talking about the Civil Rights Movement. Those things are not easy to talk about or the Red Scare. Those things are not, those are totally different from what they're, they've seen of America and so kind of opening their eyes not just to the easy parts you mm -hmm. know but also the the hard parts so earlier it's easy to clump all Chinese people into one group mm -hmm. and it's not like that once you get here you realize like how dynamic people are here and even though you know sometimes what we see on the news in America about China is a lot different than than what it is like here um, so I think one of the things that really I've learned as a teacher here is that there's that every person has is just like a student in America I mean like it's not teaching every, I mean, there's still learning disabilities here. There's still, um, there's still students who have, um, who, you know, struggle with, with, you know, depression and things like that. And there's students who have, you know, problems in their home life. And it's all like, it's so easy to just think, oh, I just teach Chinese kids and and especially in this program, I've gotten to know them a lot because I only have 20 students. And so I, I know them, I know that person, I know what he likes, I know what he doesn't like, I know where they will, you know, what their goal is for their future. And, and I can see that in them. And I know when they're being lazy and I know when they don't know. And I mean, when I was in university, it's easy to um, oh, they're just the Chinese students, like they're just the international students, like they're just here for however long and then they'll go back to China. But no, like these kids actually have real ideas. And I know like that sounds like so different to say because, well, duh, it's common sense, like everybody's an individual. But I feel like so often times, so many times on, in the United States, we just clump an immigrant group together. It's so easy to just do that and not see them as, no, this kid also has this problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's just like this American kid. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'd tell them, get to know them. 
like invite them to your office hour say I want you to be there at this time and say hey what's going on how do you like my class what do you think because they have so many ideas Putting them in groups where they can learn. Like if you give a group project, giving them opportunities to be with the high kids. Because just because their language is low, don't give them the opportunity to kind of slack off, you know. Yeah. Or put them with the kids who don't know anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Make them work. Mm -hmm. Make them fix it, you know, so that there's some... There's some responsibility and some opportunity for them because it's so easy to to say that kid's on his phone the whole time <laughs> during my Chinese, you know, during my class, or this kid it looks up every other he uses the translation mm -hmm. on the internet. He's not paying attention to what I'm saying, but he's that student is also grappling with something that beyond just language. And, I don't know. I mean, because I live so, I mean, I live here with them, so I know their daily struggles, and so it's helped me to kind of um, empathize with them a little bit. It's made me realize that when I go back to the United States that, you know, language does not mean that they can't learn. I think it's changed my my teaching so much in that in that capacity because you know before you know I took an ESL class when I was in college and I kind of you know and I worked with ESLs when I was in my teacher training and things like that but you don't really understand how to teach them until there's no other opportunity to teach them rather than other than just like acting it out or getting through or showing them a whole bunch of pictures, or showing them realia and giving them opportunities to use the language. Just recognizing where can I add more components in my teaching so that something becomes alive and not and understandable without language, but also giving them opportunities to use that language to talk about what they're learning.